Welcome to another episode of Marriage Oversight. If you missed the last episode, kindly check for the link in the description. You know what? I had an interesting conversation with a couple. And the husband said before he got married, he had his philosophy that if he really needs an angel in his life, he must prepare an heaven for her. Oh my God. I was thrilled. Sit back and enjoy the conversation with Pastor and Mrs. Samuel Addison Laura. Don't forget to subscribe for more exciting videos. I'm Pastor Samuel Folusho Addison Laura. I reside in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, the capital city. I'm a missionary for Deeper Christian Life Ministry. I'm the national overseer here. And I'm also the Chief Executive Officer of Integrity International, a development consulting firm based in Addis Ababa. Uh, married to one of God's finest creatures, uh, Sister Ife Olua Addis Unoro. Grace of God, you have been married for almost eight years now. Wow. And God has been faithful. Normally, uh, I'm such a very active person, and uh, I love to mix with people. I like intelligent people, beautiful people, wonderful people. And I just believe also that if I need an angel in my life, I need to prepare an heaven for her. So I knew that because I understood the value of the woman I intend to marry, so I needed to add value to my own life. So, and I couldn't have done that by myself. So I began to trust God to help me so that I will not be a liability to my wife or to my future children. But I was so much consumed with the fact that I need to just get married because I felt that the entire principle of marriage lies with me. I didn't know that there would be any responsibility for my wife. I didn't think about her, whether she's compatible like that. No, I just felt, okay, as long as I'm fine, then that means everything will be okay. I saw marriage from four different P's. Number one is partnership, that at least I need somebody. I know a lot of people want to be my friend and I want to be friend of so many people, but I just understood that friendship has levels, that there is somebody that should be my friend, that should be close to me, someone I can talk to, someone that can ask me questions, someone that I can wake up in the morning and see, someone that I will see before I go to bed, that degree of partnership that my mom cannot give me, that no lady anywhere should be permitted to give me, I believe that I needed something like that from someone else, another woman that could be called my wife. So that's number one thing. I also believe that there should be purity. So as a grown-up man, there are challenges we face. I mean, the hormone is there and it's speaking very loud. It makes some warranted noise sometimes. And then the Holy Spirit is there to put those things under control. But so there is a wife that can help you to maintain purity within the biblical space. So I believe that marriage will help me to stay pure, as the Bible commands it. So I also believe that marriage is for prosperity. I have that idea in my mind that we can prosper together the way we start and that there should be progress. And that whatever foundation we have built, the foundation can grow more, things can get better, and all of that. So that's my major concern about marriage. And I also saw marriage for posterity, that that's procreation, that once we have children, those children, we can train them together, and they can help us to maintain posterity for the future. And I also believe marriage is for protection, that I, at least I can protect my wife, my wife can protect me, from people that might have a plan to probably blackmail us or malign me and that I have somebody that can defend me, not as a lawyer, but as, an, as, as a partner. So I'm, I'm being protected from people that have ulterior motive or people that have been sent to come and mess up my life and my ministry. So, and I'm also going to protect my wife. So that I will protect her from predators, I will protect her from manipulators, I will protect her from even herself. Certain tendencies that she has that she doesn't even know could harm her. I think I have an ego eye to see those things and protect her from it. So that is the vision I have. I had about marriage. So, but the aspect that I think you should note 
is the fact that I was thinking all these things is on my own side. That as long as I am fine, the woman will automatically be all right. That there's no problem. So I don't need to check out what she does, whether she's compatible with me, whether she's, uh, I, don't, I don't care. Uh, do we really think alike? I felt where well, she would definitely think alike. Why not? <laughs> the only thing is that let me not wait for her to come and then come and so far. I felt I should do my best. And when she comes on board, that at least she will, will just flow. That's where the matter lies. In fact, you have said a lot of things. But uh, my, my own addition, my parents were a good example to me. And I saw a lot of things in them that I really liked. And I learned a lot. And I wanted a kind of family like that, that I and my husband could relate together as friends. And I believe that marriage is for, is, I mean, it's for companionship, is for, for, for responsibility. It's not just getting married and just waking up and sleeping. You have to do something to make that marriage work. And it's for purity, to keep yourself pure, not looking outside, not looking at another man, another uh, woman outside. It has to be you and your husband only, no third party. And I also believe that it's for procreation. It's meant, it's not, it's not just to get married. There's a purpose for which you are married. And that's why we, we pray a lot. And apart from prayer, we have to also work towards it. It's not just to get married. A lot of things have to be put into it. It's an individual. Like before I got married, I, I know we, I, I went to a lot of marriage, um, marriage seminars. I read a lot of books. But I had mentors that I had to go to and ask questions. Okay, what do I do? What the things I need to know before I got married, before I got married, and the things I need to learn to know after marriage, what are the things I should do as a wife? And by the grace of God, God has been faithful. Number one, I know the setting where God is raising me. And I know that I'm looking for one of God's children within that setting. So I needed to be seen. I needed to maintain our unbiased purity. That doesn't take away my social life. I'm relating with people. But I also know that I needed to be psychologically ready, number one. I needed to confirm my own maturity and be sure I'm truly matured uh, because maturity is not about age and it's not about stature. I know I need to be emotionally matured. I need to be mentally matured. And I began to study. I began to read. I began to ask questions, relate with people that have gone ahead to ask them, what does it mean to have a woman? You never knew, you never met someone of different social status under your roof and you are living together. What does it mean? So I prepared myself and I knew I should prepare in other physical area. So, but then I also felt that she's preparing. And because I, in our case, we had more of, we, we were not like friends before we got married we don't really know ourselves it's not like we were dating and all those things there was nothing like that and sincerely even when we started our courtship we only met once physically because i've always been abroad of my postgraduate and on missions and all those things so when i came back we just you know just move around check where the uh, where's your wedding clothes and all those things you uh, know and at that time you cannot begin i didn't know that i was supposed to ask a lot of questions and too many things we ask questions during courtship although the courtship we had to work based on what the principle of the church is <laughs> so but there are things i wish i kn i know now that i wish i should have known then also and take very seriously which i didn't take seriously <laughs> because mm -hmm. sincerely i felt that Marriage will just work normally that ah, we are children of God now. This is a child of God, this is a daughter of God. And so as we come together, everything will just be working perfectly, that the Holy Spirit will streamline our characters and everything. So I didn't know that there are things that we ought to talk about as in as in create confusion about it seriously. Then we will not come to conclusion first uh, after that. So I didn't know. 
that we have to really deal with matters and break it down and everything and scatter it before we gather everything. So I didn't know that. I we talk, we chat on on Viber. We do more of Viber. We do more of WhatsApp. We do more of all these things. So we spend quality time on social media, making normal calls. I call her directly almost every, every, every day, not almost. Actually, every day we talk, we discuss, we have discussions. But I never knew that there are, there is more that we're supposed to discuss. Not that there should be anything unholy, but I felt that at least there should be some aspect of our discussion that should touch down on understanding the unspoken words. You know what I mean? That one was not there for us at all. You know, you couldn't see how somebody reacts under certain situation, under prayer, you know, the the fascia, those things, those things that you have to watch, those unspoken things that they are the real problem in marriage. Uh -huh. So the, this person is very quiet because if that time I noticed actually that my wife is very quiet. My wife doesn't talk and I'm the talking person. So, but I felt that why should I be disturbing somebody? I get it that this sister is not married to me. <laughs> you understand those things? She's not yet married to me. So if she's quiet, maybe that is a, that's the spirit of God telling her to mind her business for now or the, she knows who her husband is. So I, did, I was not expecting that to be transferred into marriage. And that's how we got married though. My wife can't talk to me. We can't relate. We can't go dance and go around. It looks like we are committing sin after we got married. Ah, so those things could be very confusing to anybody. Uh -huh. So I didn't know what those things. So I just felt that uh, this, this, my sister, as it were, that is not talking. Glory be to God. Though. There are some other people that will talk, talk, talk too much too, and you'll be wondering. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this one will not sell me before this marriage. <laughs> you know, those kind of things. <laughs> so, because I just said, okay, this is a gift of God, though, at least opposite attract and all that. So, but we could have dealt with it more. We have to be very clear. There is nothing to hide. We are happy together. When I'm counseling people, I tell them, all oh, this gone, I must go home to go and marry. I don't support it. Marry where you are, if God is leading you. Because yes, yes, where you know, uh, where you can at least cultivate a lot of things. Don't say you must go to village. Don't say you must go somewhere and all of those things because these things have repercussions and ramifications in the near future. Those are the areas I think I should dwell on. Uh, personally, I believe in, in prayer. That you need to pray whatever you want to do. You, you, have to, you have to be very prayerful. And I prayed a lot. I prayed then, at least, so that God can actually lead me, guide me, so that I can, can make the right choice and even know the right things to do at the, at the right time. You know, but apart from prayer, there are many things also that I did in preparation for, for marriage. You know, like I said before, I attended a lot of marriage seminars. And also I, I, went, I, I went to people to teach me, I mean, to guide me, couples, marriage women to teach me what to know as a wife. I mean, what are my responsibilities? What are the things I need to do? How do I make my husband happy? When it comes to closeness to my husband. I mean, how do I, how do I go about it? You know, that's how they, that's how some of the things that, that causes problems in marriages. Little, little things like uh, sexual, sexual inter, um, intercourse and a lot of things. When there are quarrels, okay, do I keep quiet? Like you said, I'm, I'm, I'm a very quiet person. I don't, then maybe now I'm changing. He has, he has influenced me a little. So, and I'm changing. <laughs> I'm trying. So, then I don't talk. But now I learned a lot from them that you need to speak out. There's no need, there's need for communication. I also read books, a lot of books. I see marriage as, as like an examination that you were about to write. And this is not just writing once and stopping. You, have, you keep writing that examination. You keep writing and you have to pass. Because if you don't pass, then there will be a problem in that marriage. So you have like you, you are preparing for an examination, you have read, you have prayed, you have studied so hard. So now you are in the examination hall. How do you put it to practical use? Those things you have learned. So I I was ready, I was willing to learn a lot. And that's really helped me to prepare for my marriage. Even though I wasn't uh, I didn't see the exam then, but now I, I'm going through the examination and, <laughs> and I know God is going to help me to pass well. <laughs> 
after I discovered a certain oversight when I got married. Because like I did say, I thought that marriage is something that sorts itself out in so many ways. <laughs> I believe that we're supposed to come together and learn and make mistakes and sort everything out. But there are certain aspects of marriage that I didn't know was going to be on the, on the ballot, or on the table, especially the aspect of partnership and like having a friend in your wife. I believe that one is going to be natural because that's all I get when I was single. Every lady that comes my way wants to crave friendship with me. So it is left for me now to run away from such friendship when I know I'm not interested in taking it to the next level. So I believe that is natural for women. That's what I thought, that this crave for attention is natural for women. That women need attention and they want it. And I was ready to give the attention to the best of my knowledge. So but for me to get married and discover that this attention thing is Somebody does not even want it at all. Are you getting it like somebody is just in a world and I felt I had to start asking questions. Is that something I'm not doing right? Is it, I mean, you get those things. So that is the point. And I just discovered that it's not that. It's just that she has always been a very quiet. I am not taking my mark back to the few encounters we had together before we got married. And I saw some traits like that. So, but I felt, ah, uh -uh, of what use? Why should they, why should I be expecting somebody outside in my office and the person I want to marry in a deeper life Bible church to be acting the same way? No, this sister is just showing some virtue of righteousness and holiness. And she studied me to know, ah, this one is not yet my husband. Why should we be talking? You know, this kind of thing that, ah, that's fine. No, let's allow things to at least, when we get married, then we know we are married now and we can deal with these things. So for now, let us not hear. So because it, I, that is what I believe in. So but my wife is a very quiet person because when I look at her background, she, you know, me, I was born, I attended Christ school. I attended a boys' school. I'm everywhere. My parents allow us to go to, we can come back from night VG in the morning and we're going to workers practice in the day and then workers meeting in the evening. Nobody is telling us why will you be in the church in the morning and you are not going to buy. No, they allow us to do things, not sin. But you know, but my wife came from a background where she's controlled in so many ways. And where they were living is like, an, uh, you know, the university premises or college premises where they are just locked up somewhere. They can't go and greet anybody. Nobody can come and greet anybody. Me, I can greet anybody anywhere. <laughs> so my wife can prefer to be on her own. I mean, nobody knows where she can just be there. So I felt that these are the things that we naturally change. That at least when you now know that there's another world and that this is this, as you start saying, okay, I like this one. Oh, let's do it. Oh, let's go out and all of those things. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share the video, and also turn on your notification button for more exciting videos. See you.